In December of 2021, Angel Cortez Flores was living in the streets of Fresno for a few months. The pandemic it hit him and his family hard, which eventually led up to them being homeless. On December 17th of 2021, he was roaming an area near a homeless encampment he lived in when he was ambushed and attacked by Fresno Bulldog member Jesse Gonzalez. Flores, he tried to put up a fight, but eventually, Gonzalez, armed with a knife, grabbed the victim and started stabbing him multiple times. Gonzalez then drops Flores' body and disappears into the neighborhood. The next day, Flores' body was found laying in a pool of blood with multiple stab wounds on Olive and Palm in Fresno, California. Police spoke with multiple witnesses who said the attack seemed unprovoked. It even said Flores was trying to run away. And a surveillance camera, it captured the whole situation. Gonzalez fled to Yuba City shortly after the murder. But on January 6th of 2022, the Fresno Police Department joined the Yuba City Police Department to arrest him on murder charges. And as of today, he's still awaiting trial. Rest in peace to Angel Flores. Sadly, his time was cut short before he could bounce back in life. The insane part is, today, as we address the Fresno Bulldogs, you're going to find out they have numerous violent stories that played out just like that. Prison wars, cop shootings, gang hits, and so much more. This gang, they have all that in their history. So they definitely have a story to tell. Yeah. All right. Welcome to Cali's Most Dangerous. Let's get into it. Chapter 1. Danger Rating of the Bulldogs. The Fresno Bulldogs, they're going to receive a danger rating of a 9.3 out of 10. Based off of the gang's violent history of prison and street wars, ruthless means of operation, and willingness to stand independently and rely on their own politics. But don't let me tell it. Let's get into an example on how these guys move when it comes to their enemies. On October 5th of 2001, shortly after 7 p.m. in Fresno, California, someone in a BMW spots Ronald Enrique Abir walking and yelled out, what's up, sir? So Ronald yelled back, nah, it's Bulldogs. Right after that, from inside the BMW, someone reaches out of the car window with a pistol in hand and from point blank range, fired several shots at him but missed. Sure, it's short for Serenio, a rival criminal street gang of the Fresno Bulldogs. Well, shortly after the car dries off, Ronald meets up with some other Bulldogs, and they were pissed. The act of shooting at members in their territory was seen as disrespect. So the Bulldogs, they are ready for revenge. It was time to put in work. Shortly after 9.30 of that same evening, Ronald, Carnez, Another male, all on with guns, stepped out of a blue car and walked towards the house, perceived as a Serenio location. At the house, Gilbert Madrino, his pregnant niece, Mercedes Lopez, and his friend, Alvaro Romero, were sitting outside talking and enjoying each other's company. Mercedes was explaining how a pregnancy was playing out as the group celebrated the addition to the family. But in the midst of all that, a group of men walk up and starts to open fire at the group. Bullet struck Madrino in the face, Mercedes in the leg and stomach, and Romero twice in the back and once in the hip. Madrino, he fortunately survived with the bullet lodged between his cervical vertebrae, leaving him partially paralyzed. Lopez, who had to have early delivery, and her daughter, who was born a month prematurely with a scratch mark from a bullet on her back, both survived. But sadly, Romero died at the scene. A gang expert characterized both shootings as gang warfare between the Bulldogs and Serenios. As Ronald, he was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. Rest in peace to Alvaro Romero. He was definitely at the right place, trying to support friends and family, just at the wrong time. And he got caught up in a deadly war with the Bulldogs and the Serenios. Look, this episode is not going to be for the faint-hearted. Fair warning. It's a lot more crazier situations we're about to cover. The war with the Serenios is damn near minor compared to the rest of the headlines in this game's history. History of the Fresno Bulldogs. Founded in 1872, Fresno is a city in Central California with a lot of history. 
In addition to being in the middle of the state, Fresno has always been a melting pot of different cultures, aligned from Southern California and Northern California. On top of that, Fresno is located near some prominent places in California. You have the beautiful outskirts of Yosemite National Park, big scenic mountains, it's the capital of farmlands in California, houses a couple of universities, including Fresno State, and its city has a reputation for being very family oriented. But in the midst of all that, something ugly has always been going down in the background. Fresno has been populated with gangs since the 1960s, which is the case for the Bulldogs. But when it comes to gang culture in California, for the most part, this gang has always stood independently compared to the rest of the state. They started off as a subset of the larger criminal associations with the United States federal state prison system. So they were allied with different prison gangs. But this relationship, it didn't last long. In the beginning of the 1980s, the Bulldogs were considered a part of the Nuestra Familia or Nathenio Alliance, which is a prison gang formed in the opposition of the Mexican Mafia, or the Serenios. And being by far one of the hardest groups to fall under the Nathenio umbrella, they originally used to go by F-14, with the F standing for Fresno and the 14 standing for N, which is the 14th letter in the alphabet, to show their allegiance to the Nathenio. But the Fresno faction didn't like being taxed for the activities that went on in their area, including drug sales, extortion, and prostitution. In addition, they felt they weren't getting enough respect amongst their fellow members who stood under the same umbrella. This caused tension between the Nortenios and the F-14s in the early 1980s, which eventually led to multiple prison-wide wars which took place between 1984 and 1986, termed the Rare Wave. This jump-started the independent standing that the gang has today, meaning they have no attachments to Serenios or Nortenio gangs. The gang rebelled and was fully recognized as a self-governing association by 1986. At this point, the Fresno Bulldogs started working to develop their own name in the prison system, as well as the streets. And by the 1990s, the Bulldogs, they were one of the most active gangs in Central California. As the Fresno Bulldogs started to recruit larger groups, the gang slowly moved from their hometown and colonized the neighboring areas. For most of the 1990s, their objective was to increase both their numbers and their reach. And naturally, this came with a lot of issues from gangs who had already established or wanted to take hold on territories of their own. And with the Bulldogs having so many members, confrontations, all characterized by various degrees of violence, will become the norm for most of the 1990s and even today. And these violent activities aren't just limited to the males of the gang. They have numerous females who are just as crazy. Matter of fact, Heather Agayo is a prime example of all this. On January 17th of 2021, shortly after 1.30 p.m., police responded to Jensen and West Avenue regarding the welfare check of a male lying in the field. They arrived and located 56-year-old John Bullock in an isolated dirt road. Bullock was suffering a gunshot wound to the head and was pronounced dead at the scene. After witness statements and reviewing surveillance footage recovered, Investigators identified 37-year-old Evan Agayo, an Eastside Bulldog gang member, as a suspect responsible for Bullock's murder. Agayo was also identified as a suspect who shot a 27-year-old homeless female the night before. Fortunately, the female was able to survive her wounds. Heather was arrested on April 2021 and is still awaiting trial. This is pretty much the nature of this gang today. They are known to be one of the most ruthless gangs in Central California for a reason. Let's get into who these guys are as we address more facts about them now. Who are the Fresno Bulldogs? The Fresno Bulldogs are a predominantly Mexican-American gang located in Fresno, California. When it comes to other races, they're definitely known to put them on as well. It's Blacks, Whites, and even some Asians from the gang. Originally known as the F-14s, they adapted the Fresno Bulldogs name in the 1980s as well as the Fresno State University logo, the Bulldogs. Which is why often, you hear the members bark at each other as a call sign, and even enemies as an intimidation factor. And refer to themselves as Dog, Perro, or F.A. Numbers-wise, 
These guys are one of the deepest Mexican gangs in Fresno. Scratch that. They're one of the largest gangs in California, having over 6,000 members, which is way more members than any other group of Fresno. And it's also why they have so many cliques. A few of them include the East Side Bulldogs, the West Side Bulldogs, the North Side Bulldogs, Parkside, College Ave, Pinedale, Kawa, Fifth Street, and the County Dogs. And each of these cliques are known for their violent activities, such as shootouts, robberies, and even some gang wars, with one clique being known as one of their most ruthless. A clique known as the Parkside Fresno Bulldogs has its hands on a lot of violent situations, with one playing out in the 1990s. On July 31st of 1991, Dorothy Medina and Arlene Sanchez were partying with some bulldogs at a trailer in Fresno, California. At the end of the night, girls were drunk, semi-conscious, and off a lot of different narcotics. So the bulldog members, they took advantage. <laughs> Dina and leaving Sanchez to witness who was playing out. At first, the girls weren't gonna report the crime. But later that night, Medina changed her mind. Hearing that the girls were gonna go to the police, two Bulldog members who had been at the party named Johnny Avella and Jeffrey forced the girls into their car, drove them to the outskirts of the city, pulls them out of the car, and executes Medina and Sanchez runs away from the scene. But as Sanchez runs into the nearby Great Vineyard, she was also shot execution style. Avella was convicted of death, and Jeffrey was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. Also, in 2006, the clique held a drive-by shooting party in a cluster of trailers in a rural area near Vineyards in Fresno, California. Four teenage girls were invited to the party, live with multiple drugs and alcohol, and after a night of hell, only two made it out alive. Yeah, rest in peace to those girls. I'll leave a link for y'all to read up on if you guys want to get an insight of what went on. It's definitely too graphic to post on YouTube. Look, I try not to put my opinion to these stories, but honestly, is this how it all played out? Y'all niggas is widows with the situation. You know what? Let me not just say the whole game, but the suspects caught up for these murders and rapes and the people who witnessed it, fuck you and who raised you. Anyways, not only that though, this gang is going to be one of the most deadly as well. The Bulldogs are known to go out with the enemies, intimidate and assault civilians, and even have some violent run-ins with the cops. For example, in 2006, at around 8.30 p.m., police officer Brian Ayato and his partner were riding through Fresno, patrolling the area on their motorcycle. As the cops were driving southbound on Fetcher Street, they noticed a car whose driver wasn't wearing a seatbelt, so the cops decided to pull him over for a traffic violation. As they activated their lights, the car it starts to slow down. Then suddenly, he speeds off away from the officer, who immediately starts to follow the car. Then suddenly, the car breaks hard, forcing the officer to swerve to the side of the car to avoid hitting it, and up right next to the driver's side of the car. Right after that, the driver rolls down his window, reaches out of the car with the pistol in his hand, and lets off three shots before speeding away from the scene. The officers, who identified him through his license plate number, went in the manhood for Bulldog member Joaquin Figueroa, until they found him a few days later at his house, where a shootout occurs, leaving Figueroa dead in the process. Stories like this are a common occurrence dealing with the Bulldog. These means of operations come from the need to protect their territory, which in turn protects their money. The Fresno Bulldog's main source of revenue had been for a long time the illegal trafficking of recreational drugs and other narcotics. As the gang kept expanding, street thugs were hired to deal the product directly. This would allow the group to maximize profits, as they now could import and distribute dope pretty throughout their territories. But all these activities often made them the target to local authorities. And surviving the turn of the century would prove a rather hard feat for a substantial part of the Fresno Bulldog as they were now considered one of the most dangerous and potentially largest gangs in the area. Determined to put a stop to crime within the city, the cops began to lay down a plan to eradicate the group. 
putting an end to the largest street gang in Fresno. That is the goal of the police department's latest operation. For Operation Bulldog is fully up and running tonight, and officers are combing the streets for red. The streets of Fresno will be much safer. Uh, robberies, street robberies, sexual assaults, kidnapping, murder. Those are just a few of the crimes attributed to the Bulldog Street Gang. Traffic stops, probation searches, parole searches, uh, whatever it takes for us to make it very uncomfortable for the Bulldogs and to further explore whether or not they're involved in criminal activity, that's what we're going to do. They have no doubt that uh, there will be somewhere between 250 to 300 a uh, felony arrest per month of Bulldog gang members in the city. The operation, which was ironically labeled Bulldog, will begin in November of 2006 and will continue for several years. Yeah, years. With seeing the arrest of over 3,000 members with a big number of prominent members going down as well. And although severely weakened, the gang still counts more than 6,000 members in or around the city of Fresno. But they did manage to catch a few heavy hitters from the gang including Christopher Chavez. Chavez, he was found to have frequently used younger gang members to further some of the gang's activity, including selling drugs as well as firearms, said Fresno Police Chief Jerry Dyer. He also said, these are individuals who often think of themselves as untouchables, and the fact that they avoid arrest or avoid prosecution, even though they're deeply involved in criminal activity. And Chavez, he's been close to untouchable in the past, in 1999, Bowes police arrested him for murder. They claimed he and a friend killed some transgenders when they found out the real gender. And then they set their apartment on fire to cover up evidence. Chavez went to jail, but the charges were dropped. And 10 years after that, Fresno police accused him of two more murder. He definitely won't get away with murder again, said Chief Dyer. In addition to his arrest, police found two assault rifles, bulletproof vests, and young children sleeping in the same room as pot plants. The crazy part is that this operation didn't do too much in terms of stopping the Bulldogs' activities. In most operations, authorities will go for top-ranking members of a gang, like how to operate with the Serenios and other gangs structured as such. But the Bulldogs, they never had this structure. Each crew moves in their own accord and goes by their own politics. And even the members who were arrested had others ready to take their spot. And the ones locked up, they ran a jail system. Yeah, these guys have a heavy presence in Fresno County Jail, with them being responsible for a lot of violence. And most violent situations that play out in Fresno jails, at the heart of the problem, in most cases, is gonna be the Bulldogs, who have participated in over 50 battles with prison gangs from 2019 all the way up to now. Ranging from small fights to full-scale riots. With many correctional officers stating that the Fresno Bulldogs have been particularly resistant and peacekeeping. With gang members brawling and what critics label gladiator fights. Because of how this gang politics in prison, the Bulldogs are considered one of the highest security threat groups in many of California state prisons, such as Pleasant Valley, Soledad State Prison, and Valley State Prison. A lot of this violence has to do with the fact that the Fresno Bulldogs don't have a lot of allies. Matter of fact, they don't have any. Chapter four, Rivals of the Bulldogs. The Fresno Bulldogs are one of the biggest gangs in the valley. You can find them on every corner, curb, or corner store. Even though they pretty much run the Fresno area, they also have run-ins with a lot of gangs in the area. But trust, the Bulldogs is never lacking. Whether a bat, a knife, or a pistol, they always pack bars, nigga. Nah, as already established, they have a long standing feud with Nortenios due to a war that played out in prison in the 1980s. But also, the TRGs from Long Beach clipped up with Nortenios up north, so naturally, they fall under the list of rivals too. They also go out with all Serenios, some Crips, and a few Bloods as well. This gang is one of the few in California that are not Bloods, Crips, Criminals, Nortenios, or Serenios. They also go by their own set of rules and politics, due to a lot of the prominent members establishing their own standards. Chapter 5 Prominent Figures from the Set To the arrest of a Bulldog gang member who was found with a loaded gun. Officers pulled over 18 year old Alfredo Membria yesterday in the area of South Chestnut 
and Almonte Way. They found a loaded revolver after searching his vehicles. Over the years, the Bulldogs have had a lot of members put in work for the game. Some big names from the game include Armando Morales, also known as Mousy, who at one point played a big part in trying to organize the Bulldog. It's also Big Pyatt, who's probably one of the most well-known Bulldogs around. If you don't know too much about him, Google him or look up some videos from Bruh. He was a straight demon. It's also Lil Paya, Novadad Mendoza, also known as Nino Loco, Big Dog, Lil Cisco, and Big Crackers. And when it comes to rappers, they have more than a few who have been putting in work for the Bulldogs. A few of them include Too Dope. And Bruh's pretty cool. From what I can see, he's been doing his thing for a few years, and he has a catchy flow too. Look up Better Days or Kenny ASAP and check him out. It's also a fake 300. Look, bro's hard too. Definitely has a distinctive flow that stands out not only in his city, but in California. In a state where honestly, don't take it as disrespect, most Mexican rappers kind of sound the same. Bro sounds like a nigga. I had to double take and make sure I was listening to the same artist a few times. Definitely dope, y'all tap in ASAP. And lastly, it's Day Flocking. Nigga, I feel like Flocking listening to bro. Shit, I'm about to throw in a ski mask right now and hit a couple licks. <laughs> nah, seriously though, bro's hard. He'll pull you in with his bars and keep you listening with his hooks. Y'all definitely look him up. They honestly have a lot of rappers coming from the game. If y'all want an idea of what they dropping, y'all check out the 624 BDS YouTube channel where they pretty much drop music weekly. Also, y'all let me know if I'm missing any other big artists from the game. Let's get their music heard. Current state, of the Fresno Bulldogs. Even with several operations and gang raids placed on the gang, with a lot of his prominent members being locked up or dead, when it comes to the current state of the Fresno Bulldogs, they have one of the most active gangs in the Fresno area, and even grown to the point that they've been spotted in different states, including Florida, Portland, Canada, Mexico, and Texas, making their growth seem beyond California. But that's it for the Fresno Bulldogs. Y'all got any crazy stories about these guys? Any close calls? Did I miss anything? Did I get anything wrong? Y'all let me know in the comments, man. Let's have a conversation about it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you fuck with the video or if you're part of the Danger Game. Y'all stay safe for dangers out there.